I will be reading from Luke 10, verse 25 to 27. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Thanks, Amanda. Mark, come on up here. Mark uh, Miller, missionary with Youth for Christ, is going to be sharing with us this morning. Um, not a stranger to SMC. I'm glad you're here this morning, Mark. I'd love to pray with you before you begin. All right. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for Mark and for his love for you. God, I pray that you would speak through him this morning and that you, your word would uh, penetrate our hearts so deeply that we would be changed because of it. We love and praise you. Amen. Turn this on while we were singing. <laughs> so there are some things you do need to remember. Uh, it's a privilege to be here, and my mother uh, sends her greetings as well. We were with her yesterday. She'd love to be here, but she's not able to be. So hi, Mom. I know you'll be listening to this later on. And for the rest of you folks that aren't here, uh, greetings. Um, it's just great to be here in uh, Sunday school this morning. Sandy asked uh, the gang in there, how many of you still go see the fireworks? So any of you folks still go see the fireworks? I raised my hand because on that day, 32 years ago, my wife and I, we got married. We, th we thought we'd start things off with a bang. <laughs> so, you know, 32 years of putting up with me. Joyce, you're going to have to stand up. How about that? <laughs> Obviously, I didn't tell her that, but you know, that's the way things go. So anyways, my mom, she was asking me, now what's uh, your sermon title today? And I said, well, it's Loving God and Loving Others. Are you ready for it? I said, yeah, I've been working on it for about 30 years now. <laughs> so, and so you'll, you'll get uh, a report of some of those things. But yeah, about 32 years ago, Joyce and I got married on July 4th. And 10 days later, we went to the Philippines on a missions trip. And so you can imagine the rest of the team, they kind of poked fun at us a little bit, you know, newlyweds. They... But anyways, I was able to return to the Philippines three times. After that, I went to Jamaica six times, leading missions uh, trips and teams there. And then for the last 20 years, we've been going to the Dominican Republic. Actually, this uh, July, Carolyn, one of our team members from previous years, will be leading the team, as I won't be going on that trip. But that's one thing that you really learn to do, is you learn to teach others how to do what you're doing, so that when you're not around, that others are able to carry on those things. It's almost scriptural, right, to uh, train others to do the things that you're doing. So that's really exciting. Um, to to be involved in just so many different ways. It really started uh, back in 1980. I went on a missions trip with the v Virginia Mennonite Board of Missions, and we went to Jamaica. And it was through that experience of being there for three weeks, they really had a nice mix, because one week we did VBS, which you, know, you folks will be doing real soon. And then another week we helped build a chicken coop. You know, so physically we got involved in it. And then the third week, um, you know, we really stretched some of us. We were singing and, uh, <laughs> and sharing. And I was actually, you know, asked to, to probably preach my first message. And I just did that based off of a Bible study that we had been doing with Youth for Christ kids in the book of James. So I had the opportunity to share uh, with folks there. And God always, uh, through his presence and grace, gives you whatever is needed. Whatever situation you're in, in relationships, work, wherever you find yourself, physical challenges, uh, God is there to strengthen and encourage you through those times. So I just want to lift up this time to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be here, to be in your presence. Just ask that only those things that you would desire to be shared would be shared today and that they would be received by open ears and hearts that are desiring to hear from you in just a special way. And so we just uh, we praise you and thank you for this day, for this opportunity here, for the word that has been uh, shared and read already, for the, the worship of songs, for prayer, for the offering, Lord, that it would all be pleasing in your sight. And we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. I want to just give a little bit of an update uh, as we, you know, grow older, things change. And uh, so one of those things that's exciting today, July 1st, it's the new, um, I, I guess, like our financial year starts with Youth for Christ, okay? And so I'm actually starting a new job today, and uh, that is I'm working part-time now with Metro Maryland Youth for Christ, and so instead of being so involved in the missions trips and conferences and camps and leading Bible studies and clubs and working with kids, I'm going to be focusing on uh, our endowment fund. And I know last month when I was here celebrating Mom's birthday, you actually had a vote doing something with an endowment fund. And so I've been working with our national board, our uh, board at Metro Maryland Youth for Christ, and then our staff and our financial partners on an endowment fund. Because what we, our passion is to share Christ with lost kids. And to continue to do that until Christ returns, we want to have a strong financial base to help to do that. And it's one way in which all of us can really pass on, um, you know, leave something here for, for those that are, um, you know, still here and still need to hear of Christ. So that's exciting for me to be able to do that. This past uh, winter, Joyce and I, we were snowbirds in Sarasota. And, you know, I've been going to Sarasota for 40 years with my roommate from college, and then my parents had a trailer there, so we would take our kids down there. And I, so I knew about Youth for Christ in Sarasota, in Bradenton, in Venice. And so about 10 years ago, I was at a, a Youth for Christ um, annual conference out in Denver, and I looked up Mike. He's the executive director in the Bradenton, Sarasota area. And I said, hey, Lord willing, Mike, it's nice to meet you. I, hopefully, I'll be working alongside you in about 10 years. And so that 10 years has now come. And so this past winter when we were there, I was able to be involved with Mike in the ministry at Youth for Christ. Um, and uh, a real highlight was there were a half a dozen kids, boys, that had accepted Christ at camp last summer. And they re really desired to have a Bible study. But there were a lot of women involved in the Youth for Christ uh, leadership with running the clubs at the schools, and they didn't really have a guy to come and lead the guys in a Bible study. So they had a girl's Bible study, but not a guy's. And so I showed up, and I said, yeah, I'll, I'll gladly. And so we started out with three, ended up with seven, and we just started going through the book of John. We got through the first 12 chapters, and it was just really a privilege to get to know these young men and to see their love for God. There were a couple folks that came out that were seeking God, and so it was really a nice time, and I'm excited. Joyce and I will be going uh, to Florida later on this month, and then we'll be taking 10 of those kids to camp, and we're actually part of a Project Serve team. So there will be a couple hundred campers at this camp in North Carolina Point, and then our team will help serve them, so with meals, with the adventure uh, part of the camp and all that kind of stuff. And so I'll get to continue in this journey of uh, you know, living life and uh, sharing who Jesus is with these young people. So I really thank you for your prayers and support that enable me and, and others to do this in such you know, a mighty and a powerful way, because it really is a privilege to share um, Christ with lost kids. It's exciting to hear their stories, and um, <clears throat> it's a lot of listening. And so I'll take, I took like each one of these guys out for dinner, and I just listened to you know, where they're coming from you know, who they are, what their dreams and aspirations are, you know. And so that was just exciting to hear. You're going to be able to hear a lot of that from your youth in the next uh, month, you know, with the uh, middle school kids sharing from their youth, um, from their missions trip, and then the high school group sharing uh, later on in August. But that's really God spoke to me when I was in Jamaica back in 1980, 
and I had such a rich experience of just learning um, and, and just seeing and doing. And God just kind of shared, you know, with me, Mark, wouldn't that be a great thing if you could help others go on trips like this? And then that came about, you know, where I was able to take folks to the Philippines and to Jamaica and to the Dominican Republic, the Baltimore City. Um, and that was just, it just naturally happened. And so, you know, I encourage all of you to continue to pray for your mentees, um, you know, to pray for the young people of this church. Um, because it will really be exciting to see how God works and moves in their life. I know that when I was kind of um, considering working with Youth for Christ, I had to see if it was okay for a Mennonite to work with Youth for Christ. You know, I had to kind of, you know, check that out, and okay, there were a couple other Mennonites uh, involved with Youth for Christ. So I'm going to let you young folks know it's okay if God calls you to work for Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Young Life, uh, Campus Crusade, Youth for Christ, something like that, parachurch, uh, some folks would think that parachurch is of the devil because it takes away from the church. It doesn't. We're only there to help support the church. And so we're able to go some places where the church is not, not where the church shouldn't be. The church should be in Smithville uh, schools every day. And so we have teachers that work with Youth for Christ that are in the school teaching every day, substituting and then we actually even run programs out of the schools in the evenings. Um, and then we encourage kids to start their own Bible studies that are student-led during the school day. So we do all of that to get young people to accept Christ and to come into the body of Christ. That's everything that we do. Um, and this past um, March, I went out to Denver for some training with the, you know, learning more about uh, the endowment fund. And Billy Graham had just passed away in February, and so some folks there that were leading some of the seminars and training were talking about, you know, Billy Graham and some quotes. And that's significant because Billy Graham was the first full-time employee with Youth for Christ. So way back in the day, Youth for Christ kind of really took off with Billy Graham, sh you know, sharing and leading in a lot of large types of crusades and events. And so there was this one um, quote that just really spoke to me. And I want to share that with you, and that kind of leave, uh, you know, leads us into the title of today of loving God and loving others. And this is one thing that Billy Graham said. He said that it is the Holy Spirit's job to convict, God's job to judge, my job and your job is to love others. And so I shared that with Joyce when I came home. And for some reason, that just really um, resonated in our souls and just in our spirits and in our lives. And we've really been more in touch with praying with and for our children, uh, praying for each other, and then praying, praying for friends, family, and neighbors. And so I just wanted to share that with you because it's really impacted my, my life and Joyce's life recently in, in really wonderful ways. And so I'm just asking that today that, that God would just speak to you in such a way that you would just hear one thing that would cause you to change, just like this, hearing this caused Joyce and I to change in our actions. Um, you know, the greatest commandment, Jesus said, was love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so that is the greatest command that we should. Loving God is really a challenge. Um, it's, it's something that you, you'll never arrive at it. And I guess one of the best things that ever happened to me in Youth for Christ, I went to uh, a DC conference, um, and I think it was like back in the like 1986 or something like that. I went and I went to a seminar and a person was talking about his mentor. And so here was a, a grown man standing up front, you know, in a big seminar talking to hundreds of people, youth leaders, and, and saying that you should have a mentor, you know, and it would be great if you could find a mentor that for Youth for Christ, it's not it, another person at your church, you know, um, older than you, wiser, you really mature Christian, you know. And you just meet on a regular basis. So I, right away, you know, I kind of got a name, uh, 
Paul, and so I went to Paul. I was working with some of his, his kids at that time, and uh, I just said, hey, I was just really challenged to, to uh, you know, find a mentor. Would you be willing to do that? And I'm, well, I'm not quite sure what that's like. And so we just kind of got together, and we started meeting every week and praying and sharing. And, and Paul, he's a diligent guy. He came up with a checklist, you know. And so, you know, I'd have to check off all these things. How was I doing spiritually, physically, you know, involved in any sin? And, you know, you just really went through the details, you know. And, so sometimes I imagine I kind of went there, you know, Wednesday morning for breakfast, you know, a little, you know, I messed up on a couple of these, you know, I only have a seven instead of a 10 or something. But anyways, we just continued to meet. And uh, this last Friday, um, before I, I came out here, I met with Paul and there were nine others in our, in our house. I made breakfast for all of them. And we just all shared a memory verse and we just all shared, um, you know, how God really brought that memory verse into our lives that week, what God is doing in our lives. And then uh, we had another missionary, Adam, there uh, with us from Venezuela. And so he was just sharing, you know, um, where God has him right now. But we were just all on this journey together of growing into loving God more and loving others. And it's just so vibrant to be around other men, you know, from 30 to you know, 75 years old, and just going through this same thing. And so the mentor-mentee relationship has actually evolved over the years into just a, a men's uh, prayer breakfast Bible study. That's probably been one of the best blessings that God has ever given me in, in ministry. You know, you think it'd be all the awesome stories and times, you know, working with youth, but really it's what he does in your life to help grow you. And so that has just really been... Um, you know, just a blessing that God has allowed me to have is a relationship with these guys. Now, I know that uh, behind me are all kinds of pictures. I don't see Joyce and I up here. Of course, we didn't submit our, our picture in here, but these are lovely, and I know that you're in the midst of uh, a series on marriage. And so I, with the loving piece, there's um, an author that, I'm sure that you would know he came out with uh, the five languages of love. And so how many of you have ever heard of Gary Smalley, five languages of love? How many of you ha know your preferred language of love? Okay. All right. They're uh, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and physical touch. I love acts of service. And so a lot of my loving others kind of goes out in, in helping, you know. But if my wife thinks that I'm just doing something and that's, and, and that's I'm trying to show her love, but her uh, language might be words of affirmation, so I'm not really saying it, I'm just doing things, there's a misconnect right there. And so what you and I really have to do and loving God is understand how God wants to be loved. And in loving others, how do others want to be loved? And so it's not just all about us trying, trying to check things off. And um, it's really a challenge because how do you love God? You know, God loves you and I so much that he sent, God, that he sent his son Jesus into this world to die for my sins. How do I show appreciation back to God for that? You know, how do I love him? And it's only in loving him and understanding more of his love, then can I love myself. And then as the greatest commandment says, we should love our neighbors as ourselves. So you do have to love yourself the way that God loves you. And so that's a real challenge on just how do you do this? And... Um, I know that Billy Graham was asked at the end of his life, he was asked, you know, is there something that you would have changed? And, you know, his comment was, I wish I would have read, I would have spent more time reading the Bible. And so really that's our answer today is how do we love others? How do we love God? It's really understanding his word and just reading his word, reading his word daily. And so, you know, when I get together with these guys every Friday, I hear how they're reading God's word daily. I, I hear what they're wrestling with. I get to share what I'm wrestling with. A number of us guys, we read uh, my utmost for 
my highest by Oswald Chambers. And so then there's a lot of emails that go back and forth, you know, and, and you know, kind of sharing, you know, God's word in a different way. And something I had just learned this past week, I never really knew this before, but Job, uh, he was in quite a situation. And uh, so for some reason, his buddies came around Job and they thought that they should all try to explain to Job, this is the problem, okay? You know, God is upset with you for some reason and, he, and he's allowing all of this trouble to come upon you. And so his friends just laid it out to Job and, and just said, you know, you're miserable and it's all your fault, you know? And I never really got that until this week that in, um, in Job, and it's the last chapter in Job, that the Lord uh, speaks, God speaks to Job, and he actually um, says this. And I'm just going to go to Job 42, and uh, he says, You know, I'm angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant, Job has. So now, take seven bulls, seven rams, go to my servant Job, sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My ser servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me as my ser servant Job has. And so these three friends, they had to... Um, you know, make this sacrifice. But they would not have been right with God if Job had not prayed for them. And that's what I really f have found, Joyce and I and have really found ourselves, and I've really found myself, in loving others, how do you really do that? You know, you just can't read a book or, you, you know, go to a seminar or something like that. I found that it's really in praying for others. And that was really um, a challenge today. We were asked to pray for the person to the right and left of us. Now, if that's family or somebody you really know, then, you know, you kind of have a, a heads up on that one. But you're sitting beside somebody you don't really know, and you're praying for them. You have to ask God how to pray for them. And so that's what this is really all about, is asking God, how do I love others? Asking God, how do I show this other person love? You know, and so David, when he was in, um, imagine having Saul as your king, your boss, and this guy is trying to basically kill you every time you turn around. He's throwing something at you. And then when it's all said and done, David, you know, has the opportunity of, of being in charge, but yet he showed love to the only one person that was left in Saul's family. And he did it in such a way that he restored everything materially that Saul had. He gave it back to anybody who was a relative in any way, shape, or form. And then he had Mesibetheth actually sit at his table every day. He was in communion with him, you know? And so when you're asked, how do you love others, that's one example. And it's going to cost you, you know, to do that. But you have to figure out, how do I show that love to that person? And then the other um, reading was about um, the Good Samaritan. And culturally today, there are a lot of things that we're supposed to do and not to do. But then it de depends on what side you're on. Then you can just do anything you want to. It doesn't matter. So our culture is really throwing us all for a loop. Where are we in our culture today? You know, how do we love others? What's even acceptable? What's acceptable touch? You know, at Youth for Christ now, we're showed what is acceptable touch. You know, back in the day, you could hug a kid or something like that. You know, now it's like maybe a side hug or a pat, you know, or fist bump, you know, love ya. Um, you know, and so you have all this cultural stuff. But for uh, the Good Samaritan... He did not buy into that cultural thing at all. He went way out of the box. So he wasn't even really allowed to even be in the presence of this person, but yet he embraced him, he held him, he picked him up, 
he uh, nurtured him, he, he cared for his wounds, and then he reached into his pocket, you know, and he, you know, put the coins someplace where he didn't have access to them anymore. He invested them in another person, you know. And so, again, that's another example of love. Love is going to cost us. It's going to take time. It's probably not going to come at the most convenient time either. You're on a journey. you got to be somewhere at a certain time, you know, and so I'm going to take a pass on this one. No, you, that might be the time that God really wants you to share and show your love uh, with this person. I think of three guys um, that shared love in, in just different ways. Steve, he was a troubled kid. I met him years ago. And we used to have campus life at his parents' home. They had a, a nice basketball court, barbecue grill out to the side, and we would just get together, play games, have some food, and, and learn about Jesus. And, uh, you know, my memories of Steve, you know, I know that he got in trouble, and he probably cost his, his parents more in lawyer fees than in, in other things. He's a troubled kid. But Steve called me up one time. He has since moved to Sarasota, Florida. Um, he works there. His whole family has moved down there. He's been there for 15 years now, so I've been able to reunite with him. And uh, a couple of years ago, he just called me up on the phone. And he goes, you know, Mark, I just need your help. I'm driving to see a friend of mine, and he's dying. He's in the hospital, and I just want to share Jesus with him. I want you to pray for me. I, I just, you know, encourage me. You know, what do I say? You know, and I just remember walking around the office uh, on the phone, just, you know, praying and talking with Steve. You know, and how neat that is that I met this young man, you know, almost 30 years ago, and now, you know, we're working together in ministry. You know, he's involved uh, with what's going on in Venice and, and in Sarasota. And it's just, you know, by God, just by, by loving others. Another young man, Noel, I got to know Noel because he was a Filipino and I had been to the Philippines. So I knew something about food. His mom made Chopau, which was awesome. Um, and I just knew a, a little bit of the culture, Tagalog, not that I could really speak any of that language, but, you know, I, I understood uh, kind of where he, he came from. I had been back to the homeland, you know, and uh, we just got to be friends, shooting baskets, playing racquetball, talking about the Lord. And uh, as a senior, he decided to just take a friend out instead of going to the prom. And he gave me several hundred dollars and said, here, help somebody go to camp, and I bought a case of Bibles for those young people that accepted Christ to give them a Bible. And that's what Noel wanted to do. He wanted to love others through sharing. You know, and he goes, I'm not holding back. I'm giving you the money for the limo, for the tux, you know. And it was, it was several hundred dollars that he gave just to share his love with others. And then I met a, another young youngster, Miguel. And he was from Baltimore City. And he was working out in our backyard they were doing some service jobs to raise money to go on a missions trip. He wanted to go to the Dominican Republic, and he was with some other YFC leaders. I had never seen him before. But he was one of the few kids out back that actually worked, didn't fight, and had a little bit of respect. And so what happened was we started to build a relationship over the years. And uh, just on our way to Ohio um, on Friday, you know, Joyce and I, we spent you know, 45 minutes just chatting with him on the phone. He's driving uh, an 18-wheeler from Michigan down to, uh, he might actually be in Maslin tomorrow, and I'm going to try to see if I can hook up with him on, an, on a pickup, um, you know, when he drops a load and, and picks up another load. But this young man, you know, through whatever he went through in Baltimore City, he didn't want to be a victim. He didn't want to be on welfare. He didn't want to have somebody else taking care of him. He wanted to love the Lord. He accepted Christ um, at one of our conferences. And he was part of that Friday morning Bible study with the older guys. And he, and he just is doing what he, he loves to do now, drive and truck. But I always stay in, in touch with him, share a verse with him, just see what he's doing when he comes into town, spend time with him and his family and friends, praying for his brother right now. But I just really thank God for um, bringing so many people into our lives that we can love, and then that we can then help them love others and we can love others. That's what it's all about, is learning how to love God more and then sharing that love with the Miguels, the Steves, the Noels in our lives, you know, the young people in our lives, to invest in them, to encourage them. 
So I would ask you today in closing that you just really um, pray. When you come to church, it's not just about uh, what's going on, but it's who, who does God want you to talk to after church today? You know, who does God want you to go out of your way this week and just say something? Start praying about how you can do this. Now, you know, we all like to Google things, so I thought, well, i got to do the Google thing. So I, I did the Google thing, you know, with what is love, and there's over a billion different hits that you can get. But I came up with um, a ministry, Paul Tripp Ministries, and there's a couple of different things to love others, 23 things. So I actually have this list over on the side by the mailboxes if you want to pick this up. But love is um, being willing to have your life complicated by the needs and struggles of others without impatience or anger. Love is actively fighting the temptation to be critical and judgmental toward another while looking for ways to encourage or praise. That one just really, you know, it goes back to that quote by Billy Graham because a lot of us, like I actually thought I was supposed to wear a black robe some days and judge others. I just, hey, you know, that's who I am. I need to, you know, tell other people what they're doing wrong. You know, I need to try to, act like the Holy Spirit and, and convict them, you know, to, to turn and change their ways and stuff. And, you know, I really wasn't having a great deal of success with judging others and pointing my finger and, and this and that, you know. And it's when you finally learn if you want to impact others, you have to start loving them and praying for them. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict and allow God to judge. That's just not our job. And so I wish I would have learned that sooner. So all I can say is, you know, for a young person here today, um, you're welcome. <laughs> the last one is, uh, that I'm going to share is love is being a good student of another, looking for their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs so that in some way you can remove the burden support them as they carry it, or encourage them along the way. So I'd like to thank you, Smithville Mennonite Church, for being an encouragement to me. There are many times that, yes, you are down. Um, things are tough. Um, things aren't going quite the way that you expected them to go. Um, you know, you're working with other humans, and their time table may be a little different than yours, even though you need to get, you know, this task done. And so there are challenges along, um, you know, each step of the way for all of us. But if you can receive a smile, an encouragement, if you can just share your story with where you're at, with, you know, one thing that God, uh, you know, has done for you this week, you know, just to be positive, smile, encourage, you never really know what that does to another person. You know, there's five uh, languages. That you can. It's okay to give somebody a gift. It's okay to spend time with them. It's okay to give a word of affirmation. It's okay to give an act of service, just help somebody, you know? I recently did that. Somebody was moving. I said, hey, I'll come over for a day, and I'll do whatever I can do to help you and stuff. I never heard anything back. But I feel okay because I offered. You know, maybe that wasn't the love language or they had that covered, you know, with family and friends. But, you know, I just thought, well, that's something that I would like. So maybe I need to understand better, you know, of how they like to receive love. And then the physical touch, you know, just the handshake or whatever, whatever that is. But let's just um, give this to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, for the opportunity to hear from your word, uh, to be challenged by somebody like David that just loved you with all of their heart, soul, and mind. You know, to be reminded of the Good Samaritan, of how um, we are, you are willing to use us to reach out and touch anybody, even if they do not look like us, even if they are different in many ways, that you desire us to reach out and to help and to share your love. And just like Billy Graham, help us to try to understand how to love you more by reading the Bible, by just reading it more and more and, and to hearing from you. And then to pray through your Holy Spirit, how would you have 
us to share? How would you have me to share your love with the people that are sitting beside us, around us, in our house church, uh, who we're a mentor to? Help us to listen to their story. And I do want to lift up each of the kids that are going to camp this year, Lord, that you would just work in them in a mighty and a powerful way, that they would re, uh, realize who you are and that they would come to know you. We pray all of these things through your precious name, name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand for our response song. <laughs>